In Godot, you have this option to do these like manual signals. Personally, I don't like them <laughs> um, because sometimes you can get like some hidden functionality. Something might be hooked up in a weird way. There's no way to really kind of visually see it other than this little icon. And um, you know, when you're writing code, you want predictable results. You want things, you don't want um, hit it. Like the way that I describe these is magic, uh, magic signals. They kind of just, they exist. They're manually put into the GUI. And if you're not aware of them, then it could become problematic as if you look at the project itself. So we're going to go ahead and remedy this by changing these functions and how they interact and so on and so forth. So one of the first things that I'm going to do is go through here and just start disconnecting all of these individual signals here because we don't want these to exist it clutters up the ui and makes it uh, so there could be some unpredictable behavior in the future now let's talk about what the next thing here is so we need to get each individual button we have debt meta crew market etc and they actually toggle different things uh, when they are pressed so what we can do Let's go ahead and set up a couple things at the top here. Now there's a few different ways that we could handle this. We could use something like an export to do the manual assignment. But in this case, I don't think that's the correct move. Um, I think what we're going to actually do is just store those button instances so that they can be uh, utilized. So what I'm gonna do is just set it up so that we have uh, individual references to the buttons like this. So meta, crew button, and market button, like that. Okay, so now that we have all the buttons here, what we're gonna do is when this function is called, we are going to use the direct reference to it and assign it to the buttons up here. So we can do debt button equals, and we're gonna go down into control, debt button. And we're gonna do meta button. Control, meta button. And unfortunately, I'm actually writing this like, I'm writing this like TypeScript, so give me a second. I'm gonna just refactor this a little bit further because uh, this just makes more sense to me. I, I I keep doing, I keep writing everything like, um, like I'm writing in other languages and that's become problematic lately, but I'm still trying to uh, switch over to um, the standard that's been set for most of the Godot community and so on and so forth. But anyway, going on like that, um, button crew, button market, and we'll just add that in there as well. Market button, okay, great. All right, so why did we do this? Um, the reason why we did this is that so we only fetch the instance once and we're not calling it multiple times when the buttons or different buttons are pressed. So, now that we have this set up, what we're going to do is, so we'll just call this like setup. Um, set the variables for instancing. And then what we're going to do is just uh, set up the signals for handling button presses. Now, normally what we were doing was like the signals over here you go in here you go to signals you press the thing you connect it to a specific function so on and so forth so we're actually going to change that so that it's um, very clear what is exactly happening here so when we do button debt and then on uh or pressed button debt dot pressed and it's supposed to be connect yep and then what we're gonna do, there's actually a few different ways you can do this. You can also do it through connect like this. And then normally you can do like pressed and then call the function. So like on or handle debt button. And we can rename this to handle debt button. Just like that. And we can actually go through and just take a look, make sure it functions the way it should. Oh, we got a couple of issues here. Oh, it's a texture button, not a regular. Okay, so let's go ahead and just change that. There we go. All right, so if I click on that, it opens it up, great. All right, we just wanted to make sure that this specific signal is working the way that it should. And now we're gonna go through and just do the rest here, like this. Uh, this is gonna be button meta. Actually, we can just refactor like this, meta. 
crew and market and handle meta button, handle crew button, and handle market button. Now um, you can kind of see there's like a few different patterns here for these like individual like, oh you turn this to visible, you turn that to visible, so on and so forth. There's actually kind of a better way we could go about making this uh, more performant for um, everybody. What we can do is instead of having all of these true, 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 false, 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 and every time we add a new option, we end up with, um, well, there's a lot of options. So what we're going to do is actually change it so that um, we essentially set up each one of these types, these sub meta uh, scenes to be assigned to a dictionary uh, when it's ready. And then we can control their individual visibility value based on that. So what we need to do is set up an identifier that belongs to each type of meta. Okay, so what we're going to do is we're going to make a small little enum here. And we're going to call this meta menu. And the first one's going to be crew debt um, progress, prog. I'm not sure what prog is actually. We'll just keep it as prog and then mark it. Prog is actually crew meta. No, crew debt prog. Oh, so this is, this is actually meta. We'll call this menus. All right, so we have menus and we're gonna make a dictionary and it's gonna be called uh, menu state. And it's just gonna be, let's clearly define it as a dictionary and we'll put it in there like that. All right, so how is this going to work? Menu state needs to have information about um, what to show, if that makes sense. So we're going to do setup menu state, and we're going to fetch some things. We're going to do menu state uh, menus dot. Let's do the first one, which is debt. And we're going to grab the reference to the debt menu. OK. Like that. And then we're going to do the same for everything else as well. So we're just going to copy that four times. We're going to do meta, crew, market. And then we're just going to change this. So it's going to be meta, crew, market. All right. So we have the menu state set up there. So we have like the individual nodes being referenced inside of the dictionary here. So again, we're fetching this once so it can be reused in a single component. And we don't have to do these like crazy lookups into the, the child nodes and so on and so forth. Uh, so now inside of menu state, um, we're going to make a function that essentially just toggles based on the dictionary. So um, we're going to do toggle menu, right? And the big thing that we want to do here is we want to go through each um, each reference inside of the dictionary, like the individual values, and set all of their visibility to false. And then when we're done, we're going to set the one that we actually want to trigger uh, to true. So I hope that makes sense. But anyway, I'll show you how it works. So, so we're going to do for uh, value in um, menu state dot values. We're going to go through and loop through each one. And then we're going to do value dot visible equals false. And as a final quick thing, what we'll do is at the end of it, uh, we need to pass, um, well, the, the name of the one we want to toggle. So this needs to be a, uh, uh, like the, or not a value, but an ID of menus. Okay. And then we're going to do menu state. Oops, sorry, menu state ID dot visible equals true. All right, so the way that this works is that now I have this wrapper that sets every single menu to false and their visibility will just automatically be set to false. And when we switch menu, it'll be set to true uh, just specifically for the one that we're looking for. Um, so now we can do, instead of having like all this crazy um, code here, down here, 
we can actually uh, make it very straightforward. Um, so instead of having individual functions, which you know, it's it's nice to look at, but we can actually we don't need it. Um, it's completely unnecessary. So we can actually just do an inline function like this, where we do toggle menu, and then we just pass menu dot dot, right? And then that means that we can get rid of this. It's all gone. Like that entire function is pretty much gone. Um, this actually needs to be menus, not menu. So we're gonna do that for the rest of these real quick, and it should be pretty pretty brief here. I'm just gonna copy and paste it like this. And then we do meta crew and mark it, right? And then we can get rid of all of these functions except for that last piece that I accidentally deleted. All right, so we've reduced the lines of code uh, inside of this pretty significantly. Um, we've reused everything that we can reuse. I don't really see any additional patterns other than this one, which is a little interesting, but I'm not too worried about that. Uh, we don't need process in here, so we can reduce this further. And we have now reduced the code down to uh, practically nothing. But let's go ahead and just test it real quick and see what that looks like. Okay, so this is what it looks like in game. So if I click on these, it looks like we have a little bit of an issue here and it's because it's setting it to a null instance. Menu state, value. So let's go ahead and debug this and see what I did wrong. Because the code is generally pretty much in the right direction, but it doesn't seem to be fully correct. So let's go ahead and log through that. That is an object of null. We are doing menu state, menus dot debt. Uh, we're looping through each one, but for some reason that's null. That's interesting. Um, we're passing a value. Let me just see what ID is being passed here. Output. So yeah, we're seeing the individual value there. Um, let's see. Menu state dot values for value in menu state values. That's supposed to be assigned to sub meta and then sub meta dot debt meta. Ah, well that's part of it. That's actually sub meta dot prog. We can actually just rename this. Let's just actually make this meta. Because maybe we're just clicking on the one, the only one <laughs> that may not have worked. So let's go ahead and refresh here real quick. Debt, meta, crew, market. Right, all right, so we went through and debugged that. Let's go ahead and remove the print value here because that worked the way it should. And as you can see, everything now works uh, exactly how it should. Um, each individual uh, menu is now working correctly. We've reduced the amount of code that is necessary to make this function. Uh, we've removed the signals that were over here, which kind of made it um, a little bit, I don't know how to put it. It's just like magic signals or whatever I explained earlier in the video. Um, and there's nothing else really much to say about this. I mean, if we, the only other improvement I could think we could make is um, if these scenes get moved around or whatever, we can set up an export up here so that we assign them directly to the script, uh, which isn't a bad idea. I mean, maybe we can just do that real quick. Actually, let's do it. I'll just show you. So. We're looking for what looks like individual scenes. These are kind of like node 2Ds, it looks like. Yeah, they're just node 2Ds. So we're going to do a few of these. We're going to do export. Um, we're going to call this uh, sub meta crew. And we're going to make it a node 2D like that. And then we're going to go through and uh, set up a variable like that. There we go. All right, let's go ahead and add the other few here. Debt, meta, and market. We should be able to export like that. All right, and then we can assign these here to just the individual values. So we go sub meta crew, or no, that's sub meta debt, sub meta meta, sub meta crew and then sub meta market. Okay, so that's been refactored there and all this, all we have to do is go up here to the script. If we check the inspector, we have these different ones to assign. So I can just drag these over like this. 
boom, boom, meta, and then mark it. And then if any of these are ever null, we'll know because it'll just get disconnected and stop working. Uh, but generally speaking, if I refresh, you can click on meta, crew, mark it, dead. So that all works uh, the way it does, or it should. Um, but generally speaking, hey, there, there you go. There's some refactored code. Uh, maybe you learned a few things and some thought processes behind uh, how to refactor your code to make it a little more uh, clean to look at, but also you know, not nearly as long as it was. So, ta-da.